It's been a while since I filmed a dedicated wheel arch clean, so for despite it being mid-January, whipping the fake Ferrari wheels off my 10-year-old CRZ, whose exterior, interior and engine bay I've so far featured might actually make some sense. So while there's definitely dirtier arches out there, these 10 year old examples which were sport in a month's worth of winter muck had likely never been treated to a hands on jobby in their entire life so thought why not give them a heavy scrub and straightforward enhancement with a bit of bulk gear I still had knocking about from another deep clean and get a second monthly video uploaded for you in the process. With no time to waste in the limited light then, my flaky red nuts were cracked, the car was jacked up and secured and the first wheel was removed, which was obviously done prior to grabbing the dirty before shots you've just seen. And that allowed me to then get straight to work generously pre-treating the first arch with some Car God's Bay Immaculate, which did a great job on this car's engine a few months back, so figured it should be up to the job of ridding these similarly neglected areas of both loose and ingrained dirt. Once applied dry via a pressure sprayer then it was left to soak into the various neglected nooks and crannies for a few minutes to begin to break down and soften up the dirt before being thoroughly pressure rinsed off to prepare the wheel arch for more dedicated contact scrub and I went with a lance instead of a gun here to try and reduce my exposure to nippy splashback as well as keep myself out of shot so that you could see what's going on. Everywhere was then resprayed with the chemical, this time via a 1 litre trigger, then instead of waiting for it to soak in, which it had already had the opportunity to do, was thoroughly worked into the undercarriage componentry with a handful of shampoo prime brushes I had sitting in a bucket nearby, ranging from a soft bristled long reacher to a stiff bristled tyre brush. And while you watch me scrub away, it's worth keeping in mind that this isn't intended to be a complete how to detail your arches to perfection video, but more of a watch along as I give the 10 year old arches of my daily driver a realistic midwinter clean type of thing. Now there's no getting around the fact cleaning wheel arches can be a bit of a pain in the backside and while you can employ strict detailing methodology, source the perfect product for every kind of material and contamination type you might come across and spend a good amount of time finessing every crack and crevice. With an everyday car like this whose arches are almost certainly going to be exposed to more of the same soon after. I think it's best just to get stuck in with a relatively strong chemical, a few brushes and of course plenty of elbow grease, with the understanding that even if they don't look a whole lot better afterwards, at least each corner will be free from things like ingrained grime and corrosive road salt. Once agitated over, all areas were then thoroughly rinsed off with the pressure washer to remove any mechanically dislodged dirt as well as freshly frothed up chemical, and while I actually rinsed each part off separately to prevent the product from drying on the day, thought I'd lump the agitation and the rinse footage together for the sake of the flow of things here. As a final port of cleaning call, I then quickly treated the entire arch to a lashing of snow foam just to give everything one last opportunity to soak, as clingy foaming products like these, despite not having much standalone potency, are great for seeping into the tight nooks and crannies you can't realistically access by hand yourself, so foam the arch over and let it soak for a few minutes to pull out any remaining unseen dirt before thoroughly rinsing it out one last time as that was going to be that for the dedicated contact cleaning.
Before moving on to finishing up the first arch, I quickly spritzed some waterborne anti-corrosive built amber atom mac over the more exposed metal parts of it, which is nothing like a thick dedicated under sealing product, but for the sake of an extra few seconds here seemed to make sense as it works well on brake discs, so why not other rustable parts in the vicinity? I then treated all areas while they were still wet to a generous helping of Cargon's bulk water-based power dressing. As like the previous chemical, I also used this on the engine bay of the CRZ a while back and it's still looking clean and fresh, so it made sense to use it on these parts too, to hopefully provide the all-encompassing enhancement it did under the bonnet. So while that was soaking up front I then moved on to the rear arch which was dealt with in pretty much the same manner and while it wasn't quite as mucky the cheap synthetic fibres of the annoying fabric lining which cling onto both dirt and cleaning product needed more agitation and rinsing than the plastic up front and while it's no big deal if there's a bit of residue left behind it still makes sense to try and get as much of it out as possible. And believe it or not, I have tried vacuuming these carpet type liners off before, which works to an extent, but unless you're off to Pebble Beach, it's probably a tad excessive, so whatever standard they finished up at following a good scrub and pressure in tear would have to do, and to be honest, that went for the other parts too, including the newer bits, which I guess would at least help to lift the overall look of the aging area, even if some of it was in need of more than just a clean. The arch was then foamed up as before and left to soak for a few minutes as sudsy shots of areas that aren't often cleaned are always satisfying to see, even if there isn't a great deal of cleaning actually occurring behind the blanket of soap, before it was given a thorough final rinse which took a bit more time to complete than the front due to the clingy carpet lining, but it's worth sticking at it for a few minutes to be left with an arch that's relatively dirt and product residue free, even if that does mean soggy feet and splat and slacks. Once rinsed, the few exposed areas were again quickly sprayed over with the Atom Mac for the same anti-corrosive reasons mentioned earlier, before the water-based dressing was generously applied to provide a slight visual lift, and while I could have perhaps towel or blow dried the fabric material off first, it's only thin and in my experience dries off by itself quite quickly, so didn't bother here, but feel free to dry yours if you feel uncomfortable leaving them damp. Aside from obviously repeating the process for the arches on the other side then, which was done off camera as I don't think you need to see the same shots four times in a row, that was pretty much it for the wheel arches, and although I didn't have the time to here, would advise then going on to wash the car afterwards, as much like with an engine bay clean, there'll be a fair amount of overspray that needs removing from the surrounding body panels, so try and give yourself enough time to get that done too, including washing the wheels ideally while they're off. Speaking of wheels, there was a little scuff on one of these that had been bugging me for a while so I thought I'd take the opportunity to grab some footage of me knocking it back DIY style. So once the rim and wheel in general had been thoroughly cleaned on my nice sturdy auto bright direct stand and was free from abrasive dirt and contamination, was dried off and placed on a towel covered bucket ready for a bit of slap dash surgery. Yeah. 
So I started working on the scuff with a pretty low grade of heavy grip paper, nothing specific, just whatever I had to hand that was enough to knock back the heavier gouging. Then once it had been levelled out with the heavier dry stuff, the area was wet sanded with both 15 and 2500 grit paper to smooth things out and I'm well aware what I'm doing here will remove the lacquer and factory diamond cut finish but there's no way to really avoid that with this quick fix so just accepted that fact and lightly finished up with the wet sanding to blend the area before wiping it over ready for a polish. So my Mini MP9 machine with rotary configuration was used in conjunction with some moderately abrasive paintwork polish to remove any light marks and brighten the surface up and while this will leave a polished finish that won't match perfectly with the surrounding factory cut it'll only really be noticeable at certain angles and in certain light but would still in my opinion look far more presentable than a rough unaddressed scuff. Finally then, because the freshly sanded and polished spot was now without any lacquer, it needed protecting to prevent it from dulling and oxidising, so slapped some spare ceramic coating over the area before wiping it down and giving it a quick buff. And so long as it's kept relatively clean with regular maintenance washing, should technically stay that way. But even if it does dull a bit over time, then you can just repolish it to bring it back to life. And while the scuff had taken a small amount of material from the edge of the rim with it, that and the now polished finish was hardly noticeable when the wheel was back in situ, so called it a semi-successful cost-effective fix at that. So back to the wheel arches to wrap things up then, as that's what this one was supposed to primarily be about, and I'd say now that they'd had some time to soak, looked considerably better for their heavy scrub and all-encompassing water-based dress. Far from perfect, yes, but as clean as they realistically needed to be in my mind, which, let's face it, is still likely cleaner than the exterior, and maybe even interior, of a lot of other newer cars out there. Now I know it's not really the time of year for this kind of thing which is why I kept it relatively straightforward here but there's also no harm in periodically ridding wheels and arch components of corrosive winter traffic film especially if it's being done on camera to maybe motivate others to do the same on their motor. But either way thanks once again for watching that's your lot for this month but stay tuned weather permitting for another solid couple of videos next month.